All right, so hello again, everyone. Today, we're going to have another uh, class with, of course, resolution of vectors or vector resolution, as it is also called. And one of the things that we are going to look at first, so just to recap, would be the use of trigonometry if you have a right angle triangles. Now, uh, in the uh, last in the last uh, video, I had done a calculation, uh, example of a calculation for two vectors which were not were non-parallel, which are not at right angles to each other, but of course at an angle theta to each other. Um, if given a circumstance, of course we used the parallelogram of forces or parallelogram of vectors to solve that problem. And what we are going to look at today is the concept of if these two uh, vectors, so let's say, for example, we have two vectors which are now at right angles to each other. So our top vector, let's say, for example, is three newtons. Um, we want to go into the right hand side. Let's say it is four newtons. Um, now, simple concept. It would mean that how do we therefore find the resultant vector? Well, most people tend to draw up a, a triangle a right angle triangle and solve and that will give us a value for that vector but please keep in mind whenever we are solving or resolving vectors we must be able to also state the angle that it makes to the horizontal or any other of the two for one of the two forces so what how do we go on from here i'm going to use the concept discussed last day in the last video which is the parallelogram of vectors i'm going to complete my parallelogram very quickly here because we need to now find an angle now you notice I put an arrow, right? Because of course the four Newton force is also going right, the side parallel to that or opposite in this case to that. And what we form a rectangle here, a rectangle here is going to also be going right and it will also be four Newtons. Now going upwards from our starting point, we had started from right here and going upwards was a three Newton force. Opposite to that is also a three Newton force. So here we have a diagram where we have now our parallelogram of forces. And no, it's not continuous move up movement of our arrows. We must first decipher what direction we're going to be looking, where we will look at them. Meaning, if it is our starting point, according to Pythagoras, that hypotenuse is actually the shortest distance between uh, two, well, from one point to the next. So I can actually, from my starting point, of course, we knew we had started at this value here. And this is synonymous, for example, to, again, as in the previous example, let's say we have a ship that must be towed and you have two tugboats, one pulling at three newtons upwards, one pulling, in this case, at four newtons right. How do we solve here? Or how do we find our resultant? Remember, recapping that our resultant will always be in the opposite direction to our general flow of arrows. Our objective is to reach here so this is our start to our end point how do we know how we can actually travel one of two ways either three newtons upwards followed by four across if i take my direction from the start point going upwards first or i can travel along the horizontal yellow line which is a four newton force going right followed by a three newton force going upwards in both situations i will arrive at my end point here or very simply put, and of course the easiest uh, way to travel would be to travel, my line is quite bent, is uh, from the start to the finish or the start to the end of my diagram would be this here. Let's take one force basically along that direction. This is therefore our resultant force or net force in this case. So point to note is that we have completed a rectangle here as our parallelogram. And of course, once you have what this becomes, I'm gonna split it as uh, two triangles of course, two right angles, two, sorry, right angle triangles. This is one. The other one, of course, is not drawn to scale, right? Um, our other right angle triangles basically will be this. Um, all right, so let's switch back to my pen. So, what we uh, end up with basically is two right angle triangles, as we said, a three Newton force acting upwards, followed by, of course, four Newtons acting this way where our resultant is along that line at, at hypotenuse of O. Keep in mind that this is a 90 degree angle between both of them. Um, we can follow four Newtons first across, followed by three Newtons upwards. Of course, arriving at the same end point as we talked about. I just put a space so you can actually see what I meant. Now, what is actually important to note here is that our resultant is along the same direction 
we note it by a double arrow now to mix up the equilibrant that was discussed in our previous video. So we can select any one of these triangles and we already discussed, actually we haven't discussed it, but I'm going to select my first triangle, which is the one on top. I'm just going to freehand this one, all right? Um, it's quite, quite bent. So uh, what, we, what we discussed, of course, last day um, is the use of the sine and cosine rule. However, keep in mind that we're not going to be doing that. Now my triangle came out a little bit smaller, all right? Um, again, it's not drawn to scale. This is our resultant force. We have a four Newton force here. Why am I choosing this triangle? In fact, you can choose any triangle to begin with. Uh, our resultant can now be attained because this is a right angle triangle and F being the shortest distance between, if we were distances we're dealing with, uh, the shortest length between your starting point to our end point once again. So here I'm just going to write start again. So that's our start and that's our end point. <coughs> Alright, so that was the point. We can actually use now Pythagoras' theorem. Now, Pythagoras' theorem, if you recall, of course, Pythagoras, the man himself, um, gives us that the sum of the square of this, and sum, of course, of our uh, vector sides, which are placed at right angles to each other, will give us the square of the shortest length. So in this case, it's going to be f squared, that hypotenuse squared is equal to 3 squared, one length, plus 4 squared. Hmm. So we're going to end up with 9 plus 16. Of course, we know this is a very familiar type of triangle uh, that we are going to meet. This is 25 newtons. So F is therefore the square root of 25, which we know will be 5 newtons. Some people call it, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Multiple names for it. Um, keep in mind, if you see this again, you'll know what your answer looks like. But that's not our only answer. We must first, then therefore, and not first, but then find an angle between F and one of the two other uh, forces. So now I'm going to take my, my value to the horizontal, and I'm going to call that value theta. Now, if that is theta, then opposite to that side is my opposite length, or in this case force, adjacent to that, which is the 4 Newton force, is the adjacent force. And of course, your hypotenuse, which you already identified, is always at right angles to your, sorry, is always opposite to our right angle triangle. So, what do I use? Now, we have all our lengths. We, literally, we have, this is now 5 newtons. So, we can actually use any of the trig ratios. Um, what are your trig ratios? Sine is equal to the ratio, sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of an angle, adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine of an angle, opposite over adjacent. I learned it as SOCA 2R, a nice little acronym to remember if you see all the letters and all the symbols. So point to note at this point is I'm going to literally now choose tan. I'm coming down here just to make sure we understand. So why am I choosing tan? Because let's say, for example, God forbid, you make a mistake and you miscalculate F. Try not to use your answer back unless you're 100% sure that it is correct. So tan theta, as we said, is our opposite over our hypotenuse. In this case, it will be the opposite, which is 3 over 4 newtons. Now, theta is equal to the tan inverse of that value. All right, so I'm going to write it tan inverse of 3 over 4. Of course, that's 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So theta is it's going to be 36.9. Of course, I'm going to take it as 37 uh, degrees. So what is our final answer? I'm going to come back here and write it properly. Our final answer, we have now determined, as we have done with our sine and cosine rule, of course, in using those two rules, what we had done here, what we found is our, yes, our resultant force. Keep in mind that resultant force alone cannot be an example of what how we resolve a vector. If it is an actual situation where that tugboat is being towed, you will need to now tell uh, whoever is towing or these two boats that are towing what the angle, what angle, sorry, that resultant lies with respect to any one of the two forces. So, what is our final answer? Yes, our resultant, and I'm going to just take a little note here and highlight it. Um, it's 5 newtons, yes. So, of course, I'm going to write this as our answer. It's 5 newtons um, at an angle. Of course, we said theta, which is 37 degrees. But what angle is that with respect to what force, of course? 
So it is an angle of 37 degrees to the 4 Newton force. Very important for us in identifying where we need to be at. Okay, so here we go with our worksheet. But of course, um, it's a little bit small, but I'm going to actually not start with number one. I'm going to start with number three. And there's a reason for that. With number three, and I'm going to just write a question here so we'll have a better idea of what we're looking at. Um, with number three, we have three forces acting from a point. Now, why this is relevant is simply because three forces acting from a point, actually it's four forces, sorry, acting from a point. Um, we can simplify this diagram as best we can. And of course, use uh, the concept of right angle triangles and hence trigonometry to be able to, on our trig ratios, our trigonometric ratios, uh, to be able to solve for these values. All right. Now, with number three, starting with number three, of course, we'll just cover what I just went through. Um, I'll notice we have two axes. And of course, these are not going to scale, right? So you have your y axis, so your vertical axis, and of course, our x axis. Uh, more importantly, when we are looking at doing uh, things like this, uh, we should be able to pinpoint exactly what we are looking at. Meaning that, what do I mean by that? Well, let's see. Let me draw them as nice. All right, so point to note, I have my first force, which is, of course, this is E. Um, e is, of course, four newtons in length. Keep in mind that this four, oh, I forgot that this is actually... Right, so A is actually 4 newtons in length. It is an angle to this horizontal, of course, which is 15 degrees. Um, for the purpose of just simplifying what we are looking at, I will do each one in a separate column. So B is 3 newtons. That's not too um, dark. Um, B is 3 newtons. And of course, the angle with respect to what that value is, this angle here, from the horizontal again it's 30 degrees we said b was equal to three newtons oh not use this color again <laughs> then we have of course c which is on the up on another quadrant as we call it all the way up here and again these things are not drawn to scale right um this is of course value c or vector c and with vector c an important point to note is that again the angle is taken from this first quadrant here this horizontal surface so the angle is 100, 120 newtons. Keep in mind, we're not going to be forming a right angle triangle, of course, we can't with, a, with a, an angle like that. So this is, of course, C, and this is 3 newtons. And finally, uh, we have D, which, of course, juts out in another quadrant. I'll just freehand this one. So, of course, D is, of course, 2 newtons. And again, the angle is taken from the same point, where this now is 225. Ah. How do we simplify our, well, our question? We treat each one or each force as a different triangle. So in a question like this, where you have multiple forces coming from that same, that very same point, acting from the same point, how do we determine our resultant vector? Well, our method is pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to make a little note of it, right? So what, what do we use? Our method question was to find the resultant uh, the magnitude, of course, the, uh, they told us here, the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So they want us to find, when they talk about the direction, we need to find angles. So we want to find our resultant and some angle involved. How do we find that angle involved? Well, let's go through the method, right? So our method, therefore, involves one of, well, a few steps. One, we resolve in both directions. Huh, what do we mean by that? Resolve both horizontally based on our two axes given, x-axis is horizontal in this key diagram, and y-axis is vertical. And of course, that's how we know our planes, all right? And let's see about a graph. So we resolve horizontally and vertically. Another way to state that is that we get the, our horizontal and vertical components. So horizontally and vertically. So we form all our horizontal and vertical components. And I'm going to put a little note here, include signs. Hmm. We get our signs in one minute. So uh, what we also do, then we find what is called the sum, sum of 
the horizontal components, we can call them the x values, x1, x2, etc. We will find the sum of our vertical components. I'm just shortening it as we go along. What do we do with that? When we do that, we will form what is called the net components for each. The sum of these basically will give us those values. I don't want to call it net if you don't want to. So the sum of the components basically, right? And why is that so important for us is because from this, I'm going to write number three here, we are going to form a right angle triangle. From that right angle triangle, we work out our resultant. And this is the method in which we actually are going to use here. So a point to note with respect to this, um, how do we know? And of course, with this, you can find an angle to work with as our resultant angle to give us a direction. But this is our method that we are actually going to use. I'm going to clear up this diagram a little bit. We're going to treat each one very um, differently, of course. With A, I'm going to try to leave this diagram up so you can actually see it. We don't need the question anymore. All right, so to continue, uh, what I'm going to do very quickly is draw a diagram just using our 4 Newton force. Now, what is this 4 Newton force? Um, keep in mind that this value for E, which of course we said was 4 Newtons, um, comes from a right angle triangle. Why is that so? Well, this is synonymous to looking at position vectors. It's pretty much the same thing. If the center here, I'm going to call it O just for simplicity. This 4 Newtons really represents, of course, what the mathematics is. Uh, if it's a Cartesian plane as such, it represents a position vector. To get to that point, however, we can travel along the x-axis and, of course, then the y-axis. Why am I saying that this is our diagram? Well, because all our forces given to us in our question are really resultants. They come from a triangle of such, um, or a right angle triangle, I should specifically say. If it travels along the x-axis, we can actually call it our first x value, call it x1, and along the y-axis, of course, it's called y1. Now, what is this? <laughs> Instead of traveling along a at four newtons, it can travel along x and then y we need to then find these values for x and y. We are given an angle here to help us out. <clears throat> so we are given, uh, according to our trig ratio, sorry, our hypotenuse, right, we have that. Opposite to 15 degrees is our opposite side, and adjacent to it is our adjacent side. We are, our objective here is to find what is value of y1 and x1 in terms of the force for Newton. So, we're going to apply our trig ratio, and I want you to pay attention to one thing. We cannot use tan, simply because tan is made up of two unknown values in our diagram. Opposite, which we are trying to find y1 and x1, and the adjacent. So we can, however, use sine and cos. And this is pretty standard for all questions like this. So I'm going to first use sine. Theta is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse. Now, this is our formula to begin with, our trigonometric ratio. And substituting sine 15 degrees, therefore, is y1, which is our opposite. Hypotenuse is 4. What do we do here? Well, cross multiply. And in doing so, what we will get is y1 is equal to 4 sine multiplied, well, 4 multiplied by sine 15 degrees. So, what is this value here? This is our vertical component. of e. All right, I just call it y1 because our first value. Now keep in mind, we will we can actually put our, di um, our values in, but notice it's going upwards. Now I'm going to show you where do we go in terms of upwards and downwards. Well, let's take a grid. Normal y-axis, positive y-axis is going upwards, negative y goes downwards. Positive y, uh, positive, sorry, x is right, negative x it's left. And we can stick to those values. Um, of course, you can choose a direction because the, it represents a vector quantity, but we're going to stick to these values, right? So this y1 is actually facing upwards. It's going to be positive. We're going to remove here, all right? We're going to do the same now for cos, cos of that value theta, just for us to be able to find x1. So what we found here was y. Cos of our value theta is equal to adjacent, the adjacent, sorry, side, over the hypotenuse, 
So cos therefore is 15 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is of course what we are trying to find. X1 over 4. Once again, we cross multiply to get an expression, therefore an equation, therefore for x1. x1 is equal to 4 cos of 15 degrees. Now, what is this? 4 cos 15 degrees. It is our horizontal component of force 8. Why do we need to, oh, and by the way, it's going right, so it is positive, we said. All right, why do we need to know these values? Is because we are now going to work out the horizontal and vertical components for A, where we just did for A, our next force B, C, and D. All right, with their directions. The directions are just as important. Now, what I want to pinpoint very quickly before we do the rest, um, <clears throat> is simply if the vertical component it's for sine of that angle notice what our horizontal component is the numbers are exactly the same the only thing changes is our ratio our trig ratio so first one being sine if your y component is sine your x component is cos and vice versa and i will always advise you draw your triangle do this and have those values ready for us to then be able to work together put them together all right so Let's go on to the rest of them. Um, so we are using the trigonometric ratios. We are still going to commonly use sine and cos in each case. And hence, therefore, find two components, uh, the vertical and the horizontal component for each force. At the end of them, we're going to add them up. Now, you can leave them as this for now until we're ready to add them up, which I, which I will do. All right. So let's go ahead. All right. And continuing, we are now going to look at our V. Well, B, this is of course our vector B. And once again, we need to form using an acute angle, of course, between 0 and 90. And we have 30 degrees given to us. Um, I'm going to switch my colors here just to make it. Too. So, it is we have our two components, um, or again, once again, our horizontal. So, this is B. And this is our two Newton force at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal or the x-axis, all right? Um, when we can actually travel along this route from the origin, as we said, uh, to this point here to give us this vector, this force B, which is two Newtons. Or we can travel across at some uh, value. We can call it X2 or a second value. Uh, you can call it XB, whatever it is you want to call it. I'm just calling it this for now. I'm going to write down the track. And this, of course, is Y. I'm relabeling them so that we will know when we are adding them what we do. And once again, we do the same. So let's go back a bit. This is, again, our hypotenuse. Notice that little trend that we are seeing here, right? Opposite is opposite our angle given at all times, and adjacent is right next to it. So we're going to, again, use sine or cos. Sine of my angle 30 degrees is equal to opposite, which is Y2 over our oh, adjacent and then i'm going to cross multiply so i'm going to shorten it a little bit here now y2 is equal to 2 sine 30 degrees no problem what do you think x2 is yep it should be x2 is equal to 2 cos 30 but i'm going to actually write it out all right so x2 is obtained from cos of the same angle given 30 degrees is equal to adjacent which is x2 over which is 2 again, and again, if you cross multiply, and this all we can just get a lot shorter. X2 is equal to 2 cos of that angle 30 degrees. Now, let's put our directions in. And again, y axis is vertical, x axis is horizontal. Let us put our signs in. X is going right, like a number line that's positive. Y is going upwards, also positive, like the Cartesian thing. So, like from the positive y axis and along the egg, like the positive x axis, hence the labels. All right, we're going to do the same for the two other forces and add them up. So, we can just begin a lot shorter by just taking a little time to understand what we just did. All right. All right, so here we, here we have here at another force, and this is our 120 Newton force. Notice where from our y and x axis, where this force is actually drawn in another quadrant, we call it. So we can choose either this triangle from my diagram, either the one across here or this one down here. 
all right i'm gonna take the one going downwards just first uh, i mean it doesn't wouldn't matter at this point to be honest with you but i'm going to use this value here so once again we have our right angle triangle and here we have this is of course we said c which is another three newton force but um so uh this is supposed to be an angle so this is actually the entire angle across here from the horizontal axis was 120 120 degrees so this little angle inside, we only want acute angles. So this angle within here is going to be, of course, 180. I'll write it out. So you'll see minus 120, which is, of course, 60 degrees. This is the angle that we are going to use in this case. So once again, we are going to label our sides. Now, to get from this point, the origin, as we said, going towards this point here, we can travel horizontally going left. I'm going to call this my third x value and then followed by our third y value going upwards. Now, this is quite important because we, our directions are now slightly different. So what am I gonna use once again? Let's label. We have our hypotenuse, your opposite, and of course your adjacent. All right, so sine again, that's once we find sine, cos is fine. Sine of, more specifically, let me write it as of course sine of 60 degrees is equal to um, our opposite, which is y3 over divided by 3, which is our c value. Cross multiply, you will get y3 is equal to 3 sine 60. And not to, cut, not to go through a shortcut or anything, well, subsequently, if this is our y component, and yes, it's going upwards, so I'm going to put it as positive, then our x component, would, what do you expect it to be? x3 is equal to 3 cos 60 degrees. Our work is becoming easier and easier. All right, and now keep in mind, this x3 is going left, so this is negative, our first negative component. Okay, so finally, we're going to work through our last thing, our last force. All right, so here it is. We have our final force, which is, of course, d um in relation to of course um this origin what we are calling our origin basically um it actually comes from i can choose once again to one of two triangles because of course the angle given is pretty large i can choose my triangle just above or i can choose the one going this way all right anyone will work of course because again we get that from our parallelogram of vectors that's how we get these values here so I'm going to choose just, of course, the one on top, all right? It does not matter. You will get the same answer. Oh, my bad. All right, so here's what we have. We have D, which is, of course, we said was also a 2 Newton force. So this is D, our 2 Newton force. Our right angle is given. Now, keep in mind, the entire angle across here was 225. We just want a middle piece in here. Now, 225, of course, if you take or subtract 180 from 225, and why do I subtract 180 from 225? It's really because we don't need this 180 degrees above. We just need the angle inside here, this acute angle, which is 45 degrees. Now, again, I can travel from here, the origin, go outward, two newtons, or I can go across, um, with my fourth, this is our fourth force, our horizontal component, and followed by a downward hori um, horizontal, uh, vertical hurry component downwards. So I'm going to call these values, of course, x4 and y4 respectively. Now, how do we work this out? Once again, same thing, exact same thing. Opposite to your angle given. It's important to remember opposite to the angle given is the opposite side. And adjacent is right next to it. So, and of course, your hypotenuse is your 2 newton, which is d. So, again, sine of my angle given. And you, you, re, you probably realize um, that I keep writing sine and cos because, of course, just to reiterate what we need to know. So, sine of 45, you cannot find the sine, cos, or tan of angles that are bigger than, of course, 90 degrees. And we did this because the largest angle in a right angle triangle is 90. All right. So, sine 45 is opposite, which is y4 over our hypotenuse, which is 2. Once again, y4, therefore, is equal to 2 sine of 45 by cross multiplication. Now, we're going to do the 
x value, which is of course cos. So I'm going to just take it up for myself, uh, not have to actually find cos, but I'm just going to write it. So if y4, y component is 2 sine 45, our x component, x4, is going to be 2 cos of 45 degrees. Let's put our signs in. And follow now the diagram, of course. So going across, this, this time x is going left, it's going to be negative. Um, y, and of course, that's why we get those values, right? And y4 is going down, so this is also negative, all right, along that plane. So we have all our values necessary for us to be able to now find our x total x component and our total y component. All right, let's compose it and see how far we get. All right, so I took the liberty to write the horizontal, just had them up at least, all the horizontal components followed by the vertical components. I'm going to state them with their signs in front of them. Now, we were all, they were all expressed in terms of sine and cos as a ratio. So our first component was um, 4 cos of 15 degrees, and that was positive, so I'm leaving the sign in front here as positive. Our second value with respect to B was 3 cos of 30 degrees. Our third value, remember, when we had to use, of course, um, our horizontal component for uh, the 3 newton force at C it was going, of course, left, so it was negative. Please know this is negative. Um, 3 cos of 60 degrees. And finally, we also had a negative at 4, which is minus 2 because it was going left, of course. Horizontal component was going left. 2 cos 45 degrees. And let's make sure the signs in front of them are visible. So 1 is positive, positive negative negative our vertical components follow the same suit and of course now when we add these up we're going to get a value this is going to give us our total horizontal component but before i do that i want to write our vertical components keeping in mind if our horizontal is 4 cos 15 and of course this is not a shortcut but it's something to look at if we find all our horizontal components our vertical components will just be uh, the other trig ratio either sine or cos so keep in mind, and yes, all our horizontal components ended up being cos based on the triangles that we took. All right, so I'll explain that in a little bit. So Y1, our first one was, of course, we said 4 cos of 15 degrees, follow suit with this. Y2 is going to, was actually 3, not cos, my mistake, I'm sorry. It was sine, I'm writing about the same thing. So sorry, so our Y component was y, uh, 4 sine 15, uh, y2 was 3 sine of 30 degrees. I'm just rewriting them. They were both positive, and that's fine. y3 was 3 sine. It was going upwards, so it was positive 3 sine of our 60 degree angle. Our final component was going downwards here, so it was negative minus uh, 2 sine of the angle that we used, which was, of course, 45 degrees. What was the purpose of writing all of these? And of course, pay attention to your, uh, sorry, pay attention to your negative signs, all right? So what do we do at this point? We find the sum of these values, right? So the sum of these values, so the sum of these values, well, we can actually get our total horizontal components. I'm just shortening them. And so you'll know I'm going to call this X, capital X. And of course, our total horizontal components and by adding them up will give us y. Of course, when you add them, please pay attention. You're going to need to put them with their signs included. All right. So instead of uh, writing positive, you write negative in front of your signs and your calculator. We are going to get 3.55 newtons for our x. It, was, it will end up being positive. And of course, when we add these values on your calculator, our y component also ends up being positive, of course, 3.7 uh, 2 newtons. All right. Now, why do we need to note this? Well, let's see. So here we have, and um, we had gotten these two values for total horizontal and total vertical component. All right. Now, the whole purpose of having a question as such is for now, for us now to be able to construct a simple triangle. And of course, 
you could have drawn a parallelogram of forces using a parallelogram of forces to do this. So I'm actually going to circle a parallelogram of forces. What are these going to be able to do for us? From a point, we can travel horizontally, total horizontal component, as we had said, would actually be, let me just um, let me use a line instead. So our total horizontal component means we will travel basically. It's positive, right? So both of them are positive. Positive x, as we said. And of course, from a point, it's going to be positive y. We are still using our parallelogram of forces here. So it means, therefore, I'm going to now complete, I'll put my values in a little bit. I'm not drawn to scale, please note. Um, in doing this, what we will get, and of course, completing our parallelogram, x is really equal to 3.55 newtons, as we said. y is, of course, positive, hence the arrow going upwards at positive 3.72 uh, newtons, opposite to side x. Is another value for x opposite y, another y. Please make sure your arrow is pointing in the same direction. And of course, at this point, we can now complete our parallelogram of forces and we can now get our parallelogram, our resultant. Our resultant is basically shortest distance once again between two points. Following the general sense of my arrows, I will end up right here. So, what is my resultant? My resultant is connected from here to this point right there. That is what we define, therefore as our resultant force, I'm going to call it F. Now, in doing that, please note, what's easy about this is that both of we form two right angle triangles. So at any point in time, once again, we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm going to take my top triangle. I'm just drawing them. Oh, by the way, my arrows, I did not include my arrows. The resultant is going to be that way. Um, this is resultant is then hence calculated using X and Y. So f squared, according to Pythagoras' theorem, is x squared plus y squared once again. So we will get our x component as 3.55 squared plus 3.72 squared. So f, therefore, if we find, of course, the sum and hence the square root of that, we will end up with 5.14 newtons. So f we are only halfway there with our result. Actually, we're pretty much almost there. We need to now choose an angle. What angle do we use? I'm going to take my angle to the horizontal, which is, of course, theta. Um, so how do we find theta? Again, I'm using tan. So I'll say tan theta is equal to the opposite. I'm going to write it out if you need to see it opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be y, our opposite side, is 3.72 over the adjacent side which is 3.55. Now, at this point, even if you get negative values for x, your total horizontal and your total vertical component, please note, in a diagram, that just indicates direction. Uh, when we substitute them, therefore, for both Pythagoras' theorem and to find our trigonometric ratio, and hence the angle using tan of that angle given, that we're trying to find, um, those values will still be positive when we substitute. So what we will get, therefore, is theta... This time goes up. I'm going to actually write it like this a little differently now. The entire fraction. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to stop here for a second. When we're looking at those two numbers, the larger number is 3.72. It's on top. And of course, the number as a denominator is 3.55. With tan is the only, well, tan is the only ratio in which that value, that which you are finding the inverse of, is actually 1. Why? Because our tan graph has asymptotes with sine and cos the highest value on your sine graph is one highest value on your cos graph it's also one your amplitude that is with tan you have asymptotes I'm just a little sketch so i can show you asymptotes are lines that tend to infinity so of course these values here can either be can also be greater than one your fraction that is in finding that tan inverse so what we get here is 46.3 i'm going to take it as 46 degrees what is my answer? My answer, right answer here, is our resultant is 5.14 uh, at 46 degrees to the horizontal. And that's our answer for the first one.